Hello and welcome to this introductory video to Red Cat's new two-speed transmission featured in the brand new Gen 9. I'm Matt, this is Shane, we're from the engineering department here at Red Cat. We're here to walk you through this thing. Looking at the transmission, it looks very similar to the one that you find in the Gen 8. It's a little bit longer back here because there's a whole nother set of gears in there and there's this rod that extends out the back. That rod controls a uh, shift shuttle, which goes back and forth between the two sets of gears, allowing you to shift between low gear and high gear. That rod is actuated by a servo back here, which is bolted to the chassis. The arm on the servo contains a servo saver. It has a spring clip that relieves some tension off of the servo when it's actuating the gear. But out of the box, the servo is connected to channel three on the receiver. So when you hit the channel three button on your transmitter, it tells the uh, servo there to shift. So what's actually happening is when the servo spins, it's actually putting tension on the spring that's in the servo saver. And uh, that applies pressure to the rod in whichever direction you're trying to shift. And so when the vehicle slows down or stops and the gears line up, that shifter shuttle is able to basically move from one set of gears to the other, enabling the vehicle to shift gears. We really recommend you do this at low speed, uh, otherwise it just simply won't happen. You'll just be sitting there with all that tension bound up in the spring and it doesn't release in that until the vehicle's actually going. As you can see, the throw of the servo is actually not very far to go from one gear to the other, but it's very important that the servo travels far enough to actually get the car into gear. So there's a couple of elements that you need to be aware of when you're setting up a servo in this transmission so that it's going to shift properly. Number one is that you have to have the correct amount of throw. You have to have enough throw and your endpoints have to be set correctly that you get full engagement in first gear or in second gear. But if you have too much throw, you might actually burn up your servo prematurely because you're putting too much strain on it. It's pushing really hard against that spring and it doesn't necessarily need to. So to get that adjustment correct, you should refer to your transmitter's manual so that you can get your endpoints and or your dual rate set correctly so that you're not traveling your servo too much so that you're getting enough to it. Second thing is to make sure that the center point is correct on your uh, servo horn because you want to make sure that you're not biased towards one gear or the other so that your total throw uh, still gets you into both gears. If you had enough throw but your uh, servo horn is one tooth or two teeth too far one direction or the other, you might get into one gear really quickly and you know very strong engagement, but it's not going to go at all into the other gear. So that's something to keep in mind when you're setting up a new servo on this transmission. For those of you who like to upgrade, we've included a 25 tooth micro servo horn in your accessory bag. This will fit most of the aftermarket servos on the market that come in this size. Without putting the main arm of the assembly on, bolt your servo into the truck. Make sure your Gen 9 is physically in first gear, and line up the servo saver about 5 degrees farther than the shifter arm. Then, manually move it into second gear and hit your third channel switch. The servo saver should be pointed about 5 degrees farther than the shifter arm here. If your servo does not travel far enough, or if it travels too far, You'll have to adjust the endpoints or dual rate, depending on your transmitter. How you adjust your endpoints will vary based on your transmitter, so please refer to its manual. 